So you've done um, so many years of work two-dimensionally, and this work is really um, very unique in that you have um, worked with photographs and your collections of photographs over time. And how have you actually gotten your images onto these, these the surfaces? And, yeah. and, and talk yeah. a little bit about both the, the surface and, and your process. Here? Yes, um, for about 20 years, and it continues to this day, um, I use photographs in my work, both for three-dimensional work and for two-dimensional work. This is actually um, a piece that I did. I, I had a residency in Shimabara, which is uh, one of the islands in Japan, and I took a whole bunch of photographs in when I was in Japan, and I was in a show in Osaka. And so I was there for maybe three weeks total. So these are some of the images that I took while I was there. It's, um, the paper is handmade paper that was given to me by somebody who knew I needed some more paper. And it turned out it was it had this beautiful grid-like pattern in it. And so what I did was I took um, eight of my photographs and made them square and I transferred them in, uh, in black and white from a, a black and white Xerox. I used citrusol, a brush, and uh, a wooden spoon to burnish the image. What is happening actually is the toner from the surface of the Xerox transfers onto the paper. So these are originally, when they were transferred, were all in black and white. And then I added a color with colored pencil. So these are all done um, with colored pencil. And one of the reasons why I like to work on handmade paper is because it has such beautiful textures. They're not, it's just not flat and, and uninteresting. The, so, so this grid actually uh -huh. is within the paper within and the, the structure paper. of yeah. the yeah. strainer that, that they were using for right, the process make of making the paper. Exactly. Amazing. Right. Exactly. And and these are, um, I mean, we, we see transfers with many different um, sources, and but right. these were Xeroxes that you were transferring yeah, this is, in, yeah. at this point. With Xerox, this work. right, using citrusol. And and your color came. Your color source was colored pencil. Colored pencil. Do you, and yeah. do you know the the brand you were using? What you were using? Um, Pen Pentex. Uh -huh. Pentel. Pentel. I think it's Texas the camera. Yeah, right. I Pentel. think it's Pentel. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Yeah. No, no, it's great. Yeah. And 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 um, how do you feel about fixative? Have you used fixative on any of these pieces that you've been doing? That yes. you have been doing, or I do because I know that um, inevitably they'll be near light sources, and so I use a couple of um, uh, let's see um, coats of of varnish or let's see, what's it called. It's not spray adhesive. It's another adhesive. It's a um, a spray on varnish. It's a spray on varnish. So I I I spray the whole thing, let it dry, and, and give it a second, and sometimes even a third coat. Just it's it's a UV varnish. Mm -hmm. That's right to to help um, uh, block out the UV rays from the sun. Yeah. And so do you fade. usually use the same brand as your adhesive, the Krylon? Yes, yeah. I think it's Krylon. Krylon. Yeah. yeah, they they have yeah. a lot of different products that Krylon use. Yeah. So I've used this technique of um, um, image transfer using Xerox in many many different works, and I find it to be um, really the best one. I took a class once in with 21 different ways to transfer images, and I went right back to the Xerox. It's for me, it worked the best. That's great, that's great. Okay. Let's see. 